the Fantasy Six Pack Hour with your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, uh, you're awful. And AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. Alright, alright, welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of Fantasy Six Pack dot net. With me, my co host, AJ Abergarth. What's up, man? Hello, hello. What's going on? Ah, uh, not a whole lot. Sitting here, ready to podcast, drinking a beer, watching game seven of the World Series. Uh Nets are losing one to zero to Houston, bottom four. Or top four, sorry. No. Yeah, top four. I can see. Um series have been crazy, man. Not a single not a single hold team has won. I, I has that ever happened in the World Series? I don't even know, man. That's just crazy. I feel like it probably has somewhere, but it, it just seems weird. I mean, usually one team will get at least, you know, a win at home, if not multiple. So it's very confusing. <laughs> Uh, sadly, yeah. I really haven't seen a lot of this series, though. Uh, just been tied up with some other stuff. I kind of caught up with it a little bit over the weekend, um, you know, catching some of the games that were here locally uh, in D.C. But other than that, yeah, it's just uh, kind of just like box score hunting for it. So, Yeah, I mean, I've been catching it off and on. It hasn't been like, a huge priority to me. Uh, I mean, we live near D.C., but... Neither one of us are big Nats fans, so um, you know. But I, I've caught it. I mean, it it, it piques my interest. Two good teams, two good pitching staffs uh, for sure. Interesting though, but yeah, I mean, no 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 team can hold serve. So very very interesting. Anyway, man, um, let's get move on. We got a good guest tonight. I'll introduce him in a second. But let's do our beer of the week. Mm, beer. Hi right, man, what you got? Well, I have to crack it open here. Let me just go ahead and do that. All right. I've got the uh, 21st Amendment Brewery, Brew Free or Die. It is their Blood Orange right. IPA. Uh, 7%, 70 IBUs. I did have one of these the other night. It's uh, it's very flavorful. Um, the the blood orange really comes out in this one, but it's very, very good. I liked it a lot. Nice. I, I don't remember if I've had that or not. Uh, I know I've seen it a bunch of times in the store. I just maybe not picked it up for whatever reason, but um, solid choice. So mine is a. Uh, I stopped by a place called Brew Belly in in our area. It's a new restaurant that sells, you know, ha- has good beer on tap. They rotate. It's all local stuff. Um, but they also let you take some home if you want. And I got this can. Uh, it's from True Respite. It's called Hey Bud. Uh, very, very colorful can if you can't see it. Um, <laughs> so oh, yeah. it's uh, 8.2% hazy double IPA with strata mosaic hops. Um, very, yeah, very hazy. Uh, but it's also it's also pretty thick, pretty heavy. Um, it's, it's solid, man. I gave it a four and a quarter on untap, so I like it a lot. Um, so. <clears throat> Excellent. Let's try that one out. I, once I get, finally get down there, I'll, uh, I'll have to check this brew belly place out with you too. Yeah, man. It's good stuff. I, I enjoy it. Uh, all right, man. So let's get, let's get right to it. We got a good show tonight. We're going to talk some mid season fantasy football consistency and we could not do this, of course, without bringing on the man himself for consistency, Bob Lung. Um, big guy of fantasy sports, author of the Fantasy Football Consistency Guide. Uh, you can s- follow him on Twitter, at Bob Lung. Bob, you there? I'm there. It's actually Bob underscore Lung. But Bob, that's right. If, if, you, actually, you, know, if I, you actually search for at Bob Lung, you'll find a guy that lives in, I think, England who raises pigeons, and he has like one follower. All right, good stuff. I know I have yeah. Bob underscore Lung written down, but for some reason I just read at Bob Lung. Nice. 
Right. I just don't want this guy overwhelmed, you know, this pissed guy <laughs> overwhelmed yeah. with people asking fantasy questions. I just five followers now. Okay. <laughs> five followers oh, now. Way to give us a lot of credit, AJ. <laughs> <laughs> Probably got a fantasy uh, pigeon racket going on in England. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Underground pigeon fight. Uh, <laughs> always. Anyway, thanks for having me, guys. Good to be here again, yeah, as man. always. And uh, you know, yeah, it's been a unique year. As I think every, I think we say this every year now. You know, um, it's always the interesting. These stuff, you know, that that, that there's certainly some guys who have uh, you know proved me right, uh, but there's been some that I go. I don't know what happened, dude, but <laughs> but uh, overall, it's been a pretty good year um, in the leagues that I'm in and the players that I felt were going to be consistent and I drafted most of my leagues. So, so far, so good in most of the, especially the big important leagues like Kings Classic and stuff. So Absolutely, man. Got to represent. So, all right. So, for those who aren't, I mean, I think everybody gets an idea of what consistency is, right? Um, right. But what does it mean to you Let, let's remind people those who have maybe forgotten or those who don't know your definition of consistency right well i mean the, the definition of consistency in fantasy football isn't really different to i mean it's the same it's just a question of how you calculate it um other people calculate it differently they look at different they might have different setups different columns different scenarios uh mine's quite simple it's you just have to be over you know, kind of this uh, clutch factor, consistency factor on a weekly basis on the position. It adjusts kind of weekly throughout the year, and then it'll, it starts stabilizing pretty well about after week four. Uh, so, for example, this year, like the quarterbacks is about just about a little under actually 20 fantasy points. If you get over 20, you pretty much have earned a clutch game. Uh, right. Running backs, PPR formats, uh, close to 11. Same way with wide receivers. And tight ends is usually around eight, eight and a half uh, fantasy points to uh, earn that uh, coveted clutch game. Um, But it's been a weird one because there's been a lot of boom and bust, especially the wide receiver position. Um, But we've gotten it it, it almost all positions. Uh, Quarterbacks just as well. Uh, I know we're going to talk about a couple of them that people are going to kind of look at us and go, you're joking, right? But nope, these guys are – not as consistent or more consistent than you might think they are. So uh, it's just, it's been unique, but that's basically what it's about. It's trying to get those guys on your team that you can count on week after week to be there. I mean, the boom and the bust will kill you. I mean, if your guys, if you got, you know, star quote, star players on your team that are maybe in the top 12 or the top 24, uh, posi- you know, at the position, uh, you know, top 24 running backs, 12, you know, quarterbacks are, tight ends and 36 wide receivers you got basically what's earning you as starters but if they're 50 percent consistent that means half the time they're not worthy of being in you on your team on your starting lineup so that's what we kind of base it on and uh that's what we'll be going over when we talk about consistency ratings that's what we're going to be talking about is what percentage of the time are they earning their spot on a starting lineup in a 12 team ppr league nice um so yeah, so let's just jump right into it, man. Um, I wanted to start with the most disappointing uh, quarterback, running back, receiver, tight end for you based on consistency. So we can start with with quarterback. Well, quarterback right now, I mean, I, I, have to, I have to go with this guy. Actually, till a couple of weeks ago, there was a couple of them down, way down in the marks, but Baker Mayfield, I mean, the hype the consistency at the end of last year when he went 75% over his last eight games. Um, I really thought this guy was going to be consistent this year, but bad coaching, bad offensive line, uh, you know, uh, some immaturity on his side, making bad decisions on his side. You know, right now he's only at 43% consistency. And this was a guy that was drafted as a top five quarterback. Um, But just as much as also seeing Russell Wilson, who's second in total points and Aaron Rodgers, who's, fourth in total points being at only 50% consistent. So, you know, a lot of people really are high on what a quote, great season Russell Wilson is having, but realistically it's, it's only been worth, you know, being there for you half the time. And that's not that great. Now, by the end of the year, will he probably be up in a 75% range? He probably will. Um, He'll certainly get, you know, he'll, but uh, you know, it's been surprising that he's fallen off a little bit 
after a, a, a normal slow start for him. But, you know, like last week, he only had 17 and a half points. Um, so they, you know, they didn't need him as much because, you know, the rest of the team did a good, pretty good job of, uh, you know, winning the game without him. So, uh, you know, he's had his moments, but, uh, but I would say probably if anybody, it's uh, Baker Mayfield right now is, is the number one for me for disappointment. All right. Fair enough. Uh, what about running back? Um, yeah, I would have to say probably Joe Mixon. Um, now I'm going to be the first to admit, I wasn't a big fan of Joe Mixon. I, I didn't see him being in, he, he had some decent consistency last year, but with a new coach and terrible, you know, then they lost their offensive lineman that, that they got in the draft. Um, I, I don't think I have any shares of Joe Mixon. Uh, and I'm glad I don't because he's only 38% consistent, 31, you know, 31st in total points, and he's played all eight games. So certainly this guy was, you know, a, uh, you know, a definitely an RB1 drafted player, maybe, you know, uh, early to mid second round, but definitely the biggest disappointment there for at running back. Yeah, 100% agree, man. And, you know, the early drafts, best ball leagues, you know, I was. I was going back and forth. I always had to choose between Dalvin Cook and Joe Mixon, and I kind of went 50-50, and yeah, we know how that ended up. So <laughs> <laughs> it's been brutal. Luck- Luckily, my later drafts, when I had that decision, I pivoted to all Cook, and that's worked out really nicely for me. Um, but the early drafts did not fall that, that well for me. So, All right, what about receiver? Most disappointing there. Um. I, I'm going to go with Robert Woods from the Rams. I mean, last year he was 78% consistent, you know, and I really thought he would continue that this year. In fact, all three of them, both Cooks, him, and Cup, all three of them were very consistent last year. Cup got hurt early, uh, so but they were all very consistent at the beginning of the year. I thought when mm-hmm. they all three came back, they would also be very consistent this year. Hasn't been the case. Only Cooper Cup has been consistent. Both Brandon Cooks and Robert Woods are only 38% consistent this year, which uh, is surprising because I really thought they would be much better than that, especially Woods. I mean, Brandon Cooks never has really been that consistent of a, a wide receiver, regardless of you know when he's played. In fact, I think last year he was 67%, and that was one of his best years ever. Uh, so that doesn't surprise me, but Robert Woods being this down this far, um, and you know, again, I was probably had a lot more love for him than most. I mean, if you're going to look at maybe more of a, a wide receiver one drafted guy, it'd probably be either, you know, uh, Keenan Allen or, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. Just because they're both around, you know, 50 and 57% consistent. So they certainly haven't had the consistency um, as much as I would have thought they would have, especially Beckham. But that's really just been a product of, the, you know, Baker Mayfield, as I mentioned. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I, you know, I, I took Baker in, in one league and dropped him pretty early. It was just like, nope, not worth it. There were other guys that I could rely on. It just looked bad from the start for him. And, I cut bait, thankfully, when I did, because I know people that held on to him a lot longer, hoping for mm-hmm. a turnaround. All right, finishing up here. I know tight end's not the greatest, but <laughs> who's been the most disappointment? <laughs> They're all kind of disappointments. Close, and it is OJ Howard oh, by yes. a mile. Yes, holy cow! Knew that was coming. I mean, I don't even think I don't even think OJ Howard knew he was going to be this bad this year. Uh, <laughs> that, it's just amazing that a guy with that kind of talent, after being seventy percent consistent last year, mm-hmm. um, granted, yes, I know you bring in Bruce Arians, maybe he's not the biggest fan of tight ends, but for God's sakes, how do you let this guy not be used at all? In fact, you're using Cameron Braid still more. Um, <sighs> I, that's I don't just get it. been. I, I mean, I I had him in. Basically, I had three tight ends I was drafted in almost every league. It was either Evan Ingram, O.J. Howard, or Jared Cook. <laughs> I was one for three. Yeah, luckily, pretty most, much. Most, luckily, most of them were Ingram, thank God. Yeah. Um, but, the, you know, in those other leagues, I got lucky, and I picked up Will Disley, and he was good for a while. And, you know, now I've got Darren Fells in that spot. I mean, I've just been, like most people, have been scrambling like hell at the tight end position because, one – I didn't want to spend I didn't want to spend up for, you know, Kelsey and those guys, which, you know, even that wouldn't have, hasn't been the best. Um, and I had no thoughts that Austin Hoomer, 
Austin Hooper, who's never been consistent ever, all of a sudden would become consistent. But maybe that's the Dirk Cutter we should have looked at when he was at Tampa Bay last year with those right? hours. So. Yeah, yeah, that that was kind of a how the hell did I miss that <laughs> one? Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, you heard a little bit about Hooper, then you were like, ah, I don't know. There's a lot of weapons there. They're yeah, gonna use him, and man, oh, yeah. it's like, yeah, right, yeah. It's like, man, it's so obvious now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So on the flip side here, who are some of the the surprises that you have so far? Um, I, I mean, what's your most surprising quarterback at this spot? Um, I, well, there's two of them that are at at 86 percent consistent, which is actually the first, the highest percentage so far. Uh, both Patrick Mahomes and Matt Ryan were 100 percent until a week or so ago when they both got injured in the same week. And they both obviously didn't earn a clutch game because they didn't make it through those games. Um, but two of them that have surprised me, one is Dak Prescott. He's at 86%, fifth in total points. Um, again, outside of his rookie season, Dak has not been that consistent since then uh, because that's been basically, you know, the Cowboys have been, you know, Zeke all day and, you know, Dak throws when he has to. Um but certainly that's been, a, a, you know, again, new OC, somebody that has, you know, been able to use both Prescott and, and match him up with, you know, Amari Cooper, making him viable again. Uh, you know, Michael Gallup, uh, you know, uh, the rest of that team doing a pretty good job that that's been a, a pretty big surprise. But um, and a lot of people think this is a big surprise, but Josh Allen is also at 86 percent. The more surprising aspect of that is he's only 19th in total points. Now, granted, he has had a bye week or he's missed a week. Um, I can't remember if it was a bye or if he actually got hurt. But uh, so that that hurts his points total a little bit. I get that. But every week he's putting up that, you know, over 20 points a week. He's 21, 22, 24. I don't know if he's been much higher uh, than that in any week and that's why his points are down but his consistency has been great now a lot of people go well, where did that come from well if you looked at his last eight games uh, or last six games last year he went five of six over the last six games at the end of the year in fact I think somebody I think I remember hearing or reading that he might have been the number one uh, uh, quarterback over those last six games in total points too last year so he showed that he can do it um I'm surprised the consistency has stayed. I mean, I, I liked him as a backup quarterback, and I have him as a backup quarterback, and luckily it's been the leagues where uh, I also took Baker Mayfield. So he's actually been my starter for many weeks. Right. Uh, but those two guys have definitely been, you know, in my, in my mind, the probably two biggest surprises as of right now through, through the midseason. All right. What about uh, what running backs are you looking at here? Um. I, I think the biggest surprise to me is Leonard Fournette being 100% consistent. Probably even bigger than that is the fact that he hasn't done anything stupid yet. I mean, that <laughs> to me is amazing. Um, Him and Zeke, on, right? <laughs> on the stupid, stupid consistency <laughs> ranking, he was been number one for years. Um, but you know, now that they got rid of your Ramsey, maybe all the cancer is gone, and maybe he was just you know. The, the firecracker, you know, and, and Jalen Ramsey was the, the, the match. I don't know, but he's been consistent. He's fifth in total points, 100% right up there with Dalvin Cook, CQ Elliott. Obviously, another big surprise is James White being back up there at seven for seven, uh, but only ranked 25th in total points, kind of doing the Josh Allen thing at the running back position, getting at 12 to 15 a week, but nothing much higher. Uh, but you know, being for you there every week, you got him as your flex player. He's probably working out very well. Uh, so those guys are probably definitely the ones that uh, have been the bigger surprise uh, so far at the running back position. All right. What about uh, receivers? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to stay with Buffalo and John Brown is also 86% consistent, even though he's 20th in total points, kind of like Josh Allen. He's just getting that, 12 to 15 a week, just earning his clutch game and moving on. Uh, he's definitely one of the biggest surprises of somebody being ranked that high. Um, you know, Allen Robinson being that high is kind of surprising. He's at 86%, especially when you realize how bad Trubisky is. But when you throw to Robinson 200 times a game, he's got to catch something. Uh, so that's been a biggest. And probably DJ Shark. Um, you know, I don't think anybody saw that one coming. Yeah. Um, but I think the one thing that has been, you know, 
the biggest surprise is, like I said, is how inconsistent and all over the board the receivers have been, but we'll get into that a little bit later. All right. Last but not least, the tight end. Who you got surprising you as the the good guys here? Well, like I said, Austin Hooper's definitely up there. Um, yeah, you know, I guess really other than that, Darren Waller. I mean, I know there right. was some there was some talk about yeah. him uh, being, you know, could be a decent pickup, you know, a late tight end one, maybe an early tight end two, but I don't think anybody was expecting this guy to be third in total points and 86% consistent through the middle of the year. Um, and I don't see it slowing down for him. I mean, he's Apparently, definitely sync in sync with, uh, Mr. Carr. That's for sure. Apparently AJ did. Cause he drafted him super early in every league somehow. And, uh, I gave him Way crap for it everywhere and <laughs> looked like an idiot. Waller? Didn't it, wasn't it Waller? Didn't you take Waller no, a couple, it, early in a couple places? I did, I did in a couple of leagues, but I also took Disley. Was Disley. I mean, both of them, though. They were awesome when they yeah. were. Yeah. Disley know? was amazing for a while. Yeah. Got hurt. yeah, yeah. man. All right, so we're going to we're gonna highlight some players here. We're going to start with quarterbacks. We're going to go through running backs and receivers, and then we got a, a tight end question for you. But, um, sure. So you, you, took a couple, you took the two quarterbacks that we wanted to ask about. It was, it was Allen and Wilson. So we got a couple right. backups. I, I, I came prepared. Um, That's good. So a guy who just got benched, Andy Dalton, on his birthday nonetheless. On his birthday. I know. Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> Take a seat. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, anyway, look, I don't think anybody's coming out saying Andy Dalton's good, but I mean, 75% <laughs> consistent. Yeah. That was, yeah. I looked at that. It was like, that's gotta be a typo. <laughs> I mean, well, it and doesn't it's make... not because they're, they were always losing. Their defense is terrible. Uh, their offensive line is garbage. Um, that's all they had. I mean, he had to be throwing the ball. That's um, true. It wouldn't surprise me if Ryan Finley, I don't, you know, I've heard a lot of good things about him. He might come in and stay as consistent as Dalton was because if you're getting all your points in garbage time, points are points. We don't care how you get them. That's true. Um, hey, uh, you know, I, I just think Dalton was, is, you know, has been a product of, you know, garbage time and, and they've had to throw the ball a lot to catch up or stay in games. Um, they've lost them all. So that's not helping. <laughs> um, and I get it. You know, I mean, I think the the thing that has surprised me about that benching was why didn't you make this decision two weeks ago, trade Andy Dalton to somebody for as a backup or, or, you know, or get some value out of him. You know, if you're starting over, basically if you're rebuilding now with Ryan Finley, why are you still keeping A.J. Green? Right. Why I was going to say, A.J. Green's, Green's in the same boat. Why, why didn't you have just basically a fire sale and say, okay, we're rebuilding, we're tanking, we're going to get a ton of draft picks, and let's just do this. Make that decision before the, the cutoff, uh, the, you know, the, trade, the trade deadline, um, and get something for it. But, you know, Bengals but, have always been right up there with <laughs> the Browns before Dorsey came in as some of the dumbest management, so... Um, Taking a page out of the Redskins yeah. book and not trading Trent Williams when he <laughs> yeah, definitely exactly. says he's not yeah. going to play. Like, right. dumb. Dumb, 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 dumb. dumb. Hasn't even gave passed up. the physical. I, I know, right? Like, uh, without putting a helmet on. You can't do it without a You can't put a helmet on. Though. That's all. Way to go, guys. <laughs> yeah. No, it was uh, just super interesting to see Dalton way up there. I mean, yeah. yeah. All right. So... Next guy we got listed here is Aaron Rodgers. He's fourth ranked, yet he's fifty percent consistent. So I, I mean, what what's your take on Rodgers? I mean, well, he I, he was going so high in drafts. Right. Well, I think basically Lafleur came out um, and had this, you know, brilliant idea that look, well, and and here's the thing. Uh, they were going to be a run first team and let Aaron throw the ball when he needs to and have a good defense. And by the way, they were five and two, I think, but five and two through the first seven games. So uh, it was six, six and one, six and one. Okay. Sorry. So it was working. So as a coach in an NFL team wise, you're doing a great job Matt LaFleur. You're what you're six and one. You're keeping Aaron Rodgers healthy. 
because uh, he's not getting blitz all the time. The defense is doing a great job. He doesn't have to throw as much, which means he doesn't take as many hits. He stays healthy. It's, it, it, we're, we're winning a championship with this team. We don't care about your fantasy players. <laughs> but then, you know, um, they, all the receivers started getting hurt, and the defense is starting to slow, you know, kind of give up some more bigger plays. And the last few, you know, three straight games now, Rodgers has put up, has earned a clutch game. He was at one point, like, one one of, uh, I don't know if he was one of eight. No, he wasn't one of eight, obviously. He was uh, <laughs> probably he was one, one of five. five. Like he was down in, like, 20%, him and Baker. Yeah. And now he's up to, you know, he's went three straight. So now he's, uh, you know, uh, four for eight, and he's certainly on his way back. But here's the thing, you know, if they play some teams that don't have as good of an offense – to keep up or, or, you know, make that, make them have to play, you know, play as hard. You may see Rogers do this a couple more games because if they're winning on defense and running, um, you know, and most of the passes this past week, which gave him so many fantasy points were to Aaron or to Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams anyway. Um, yeah. So I, I'm a little worried if I was, I, first off, I didn't do, I didn't draft Rogers very much. Basically I usually waited and was getting, um, guys like Matt Ryan and um, Goff and and um, I had Drew Brees, Carson Wentz, you know those kind of guys. I was kind of going middle of the road. I didn't want to go too high or too too late. Um, and then drafted guys as backups like uh, you know uh, Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson and mm-hmm. Brady. You know um, I think I had Watson in a few leagues as well. I think a couple of leagues I took Mahomes because they like went in the fifth round or I got him wow. pretty inexpensively. Yeah. Well, in, in the King's classic <laughs> auction nice draft. <laughs> yeah. So King's classic auction draft and you know, the King's classic is, you know, the Brad Evans and Mike Clay's all these guys. So somebody brings up Mahomes, and <laughs> the bidding stopped at $14 and I got him. Wow. And I looked around the room and I go, <laughs> oh my goodness. did he die, guys? I looked at everybody like, this was, like there was some kind of – like I was looking for a camera like I just got punked. Because I was yeah. like, did you guys just stop at $14 on Patrick Mahomes? That's incredible. It was. And and the funny thing was not a single quarterback went over that amount the rest of the draft. Like Sean Watson went for 12 uh, oh, I mean, it, was it was amazing how undervalued these guys are with quarterbacks. And I think – um, in the actual snake draft, I think Mahomes went in the fourth. I thought he'd fall. I thought for sure he'd fall to the fifth because I thought, well, these guys never, you know, never have to seem to have any love for quarterbacks. But um, but Mahomes did go in the fourth. I didn't get him in that one. Uh, That's pretty but, crazy, though. That's still pretty nuts. I'd yeah, be all over that. Million dollars. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I was I was stunned. Um, so anyway, that league, I'm six and two. <laughs> so I'm doing right. I, even right? My own's getting hurt because my backup was Josh Allen. Um, nice. And Matthew Stafford. So. But, yeah, Stafford. Uh, Stafford's anyway. been a surprise too. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, the funny thing was two years ago he was actually like 75 percent consistent. Always seemed to have some decent consistency. And then last Very year, good. you know, of course we didn't find out until after the fact that you know he had a bad back and you know all this stuff, and so you know. Well, and they also just changed the offense. So, right, but right. this year the run game is atrocious, and so they've just been like, "Nope, Stafford, just go throw again right. a lot, please, thank a you." Lot. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right, man. Let's move on to some running back. So, I want to start here with Chris Carson, a guy who was sort of under, like, well, early in the draft season, very underrated, mm-hmm. um, and then crept up the draft board slowly and then spiked right at the end. Uh, everybody was like, oh, wait a minute. Chris Carson's actually good. Let's draft this guy. Um, <laughs> so, but I mean, paying off, you know, even that late, even that late draft season uh, stock value there, eighth ranked running back, but he's only 63% consistent. I was pretty surprised. I'm a Chris Carson owner in multiple leagues and I don't feel like he's 63% consistent. I'm pretty happy with him. <laughs> what? Well, and again, like you said, it depends where you draft. I mean, if he's your running back too, which he probably is in both your leagues, maybe even. He's actually my flex in both my leagues. Okay. Right. So he's a flex for both your leagues. So getting 12 to 13, 12 to 15 points or, you know, 10 to 12 points a week probably doesn't seem to be that bad. 
Um, right. And he certainly has had some de- good weeks where he's been 25 you know, to 30 as well. Um, he's just had a lot of games that he was very close and didn't make it. So he might have had like, you know, 10.3 and the cutoffs like 10.5. Um, what you may see is that by the end of the year, if the – the clutch factor fluctuates a little lower, he might actually gain a game or two that will could move up. So that's kind of how the system works is that you, it, you know, especially early in the year, like I said, after week four, it gets pretty standard, but uh, it'll fluctuate a little bit. But like I said, he's certainly been worth the value, whether you got him as a RB2 or a flex, he's certainly worthwhile. Uh, when he's getting the points, he's getting quite a bit. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him by the end of the year getting up in the 70% or higher range. And that's what I expected out of him. I mean, I was all in on him. If you guys remember from the guide and from the podcast, I mean, I had this huge man crush on Chris Carson's from day one. I yeah. said, if you don't get him as your RB2, you're, you're really missing out. Yeah. Um, and you're right. Everybody kind of woke up and realized this in August. I don't mm-hmm. know why. Maybe because I just, you know, I kept promoting it, but um you know, but by then I'd done so many drafts where I would draft him as my, like you said, RB three or my flex that it was, it was great value. And I didn't, you know, didn't have to draft him too high uh, until, you know, basically end of August at that point. But I think he'll, you know, they're going to keep feeding him the rock. There's no, you know, Rashad Penny's not going to take anything away from him. Uh, you know, I, I think if anything, the struggle he had and why he probably missed a clutch game or two was when he had those fumbling problems and they were kind of putting him on the bench for half of a game. I'm pretty sure those two of those games are two of the ones he's missed uh, when, you know, he got kind of bad. That makes sense. After he, so, you know, in the games, he probably had enough touches because he didn't get benched and he didn't fumble. You know, he's probably been perfect in those games. So that's really the key with him. If he, if he, you know, keeps the fumbles down, um, he'll get the targets. He'll get the carries. He'll get the touches. It's not going to be a problem for him. But, you know, he'll, he'll pick it back up. In fact, you know, maybe if you'd go to someone, someone in your league and go, hey, man, you know, he's only 63% consistent. Look at Bob's numbers, man. This guy's better. <laughs> you probably should trade him to me for, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, James White. <laughs> James White's one hundred percent. James you, White is I'll about to James really get White hot. For Chris Carson. <laughs> James White's like top ten three games are coming up right now. That's right. Look at this guy. One hundred percent consistent. Board. Don't miss out. <laughs> or show him the Devin Delvin Singletary, which I think you're going to talk about next. We are. Uh, yes, right on cue, uh, Devin Singletary. Now, I, I mean, he has missed some games, but he's seventy five percent consistent. I mean, yeah. is this? Is this like in the ultimate by low? Oh man, pick yeah. right now. Yes, de- absolutely. It's just you know, I, I kind of said to, uh, to somebody, I said, I said Buffalo reminds me of Miami a couple years ago when freaking Frank Gore can't get old and stay old and get out of the way for these <laughs> these running backs to, you know, like Kenyon Drake was kind of being blocked by him, uh, you know, in Miami. Singletary is the same thing, but Singletary, when he's playing, even in the same games with Gore, he's putting up solid points because he's the third down back. You know, he's giving Frank Gore some rest, and it's working for Buffalo. You know, that 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 kind of lightning and thunder kind of thing is working well for them. Uh, you yeah. know, Singletary had a nice game again this week. Again, based on, you know, what we talked about with the upcoming schedule, with the division they're in, uh, if Singletary can stay healthy, and that's really his biggest issue, this guy can put up numbers, and if you can go out and find him anywhere, sitting on somebody's bench, uh, you know, because they kind of forgot about him because he, you know, hasn't been do- doing as well, uh, definitely go grab him. Buy low now before it's too late. All right, I'll have to look at some teams and see who has him and try to pluck him <laughs> right immediately. I'm kidding. I have I have too many teams that are just in dire need of running back help, and I don't know. I guess it's just because I drafted a, a Kelsey early, or mm-hmm. you know, just jumped right. on some receivers that I thought were going to pan out and kind of didn't. So, yeah, yeah, man, I was all about the running back, running back, running back this year, and it worked out really well for me. <laughs> yeah, um, say did or did not? I did. Oh, I okay. went heavy. Heavy running back. But did, did you say it did work out or it did not work it out? It did. I'm doing pretty okay. well in just about all right. my leagues. Um, right. 
So, all right, man. Uh, receivers. So the first guy I want to bring up is Tyrell Williams. Now he's the 35th ranked receiver. Um, but that's you know that's thanks to injury. I mean, this guy's been right. you know in the end zone a ton every time he plays, and he's a hundred percent consistent. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he is started every week, you know, a hundred percent. But at this point, like, do you consider him an auto plug in, plug and play guy? I mean, I would say yes because I would assume, like, the, where I have him in most of my leagues, he was my fifth receiver I drafted, maybe my sixth receiver, fourth right. at best. So if to plug a guy in like this at your flex spot, you know, especially if it's a three receiver and a flex, I mean, to put this guy in your flex spot, you know, and you know you're going to get at least, you know. T- 11 points or more from him every week um normally more uh because again if you know you look at that uh 80 points in five games i mean that's 16 points a week so that's what he's averaging yeah Um, so you know granted he started off red hot he had some bigger games early but you know he came back this first week everybody is kind of talking about you know he's got the planner whatever he's how you pronounce it plantar fasciitis or i can't snap plantar fasciitis yeah Uh, the foot problem (laughs) <laughs> yes, and, that one. You know, he goes he goes out and puts up twelve. You know what was it? Twelve points this past week, so or fifteen points. Um, I can't remember now. Yeah, it looks like eighteen. Uh, yeah, eighteen. Yeah, because I think he had. Yeah, uh, we got the chart there? up on the on the slide deck here, so you can see yeah. it on the. So you know, um, and that's his first week back. Now, granted, mm. they were playing Houston, so you know, right. definitely a good matchup. But this week they played Detroit. Which would be another big matchup for that yep. for the passing game. So I expect a big shootout between Detroit and and Oakland this week. So uh, again, Oakland's defense, you know, kind of like kind of like the Andy Dalton thing. You know, uh, Oakland's going to have to throw the ball a lot because well they're always behind and they don't have a very good defense. So I think as long as Tyrell Williams can stay healthy, um, yeah, I think he's an auto plug as a flex spot every week for sure. Yeah, so, I, I guess I. So one, one thing to chime in there, is, and before yeah. you go, AJ, is I Final do, break. I yeah, I do worry about the touchdown regression, the negative regression. Um, like if he doesn't get in the end zone a couple of these weeks, I mean, you're, we're talking five points, six points. That's okay, uh, right. but that's not what you want. So I worry, like if he didn't find the end zone. He's not doing anything. I mean, even his last three games, it's three receptions. Granted, this last week he had a big play, so 91 yards. Right. I do worry about that. So I'm not totally plug and play with him, but he's very, very close. Right. So. Well, and I think it's a matchup, too. I mean, obviously, if it's you know bad pass defense, if they're going to, you know, if Oakland's playing San Francisco, that's going to be a different story. Yeah, no thanks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, obviously matchup still could be considered. But when they're playing most of these teams like Kansas City in their division, Sandy or mm-hmm. their Chargers in their division, Denver's a little bit better defensively. But you, you let know, them up the first get game. Exhausted <laughs> with Brandon Allen as their quarterback because he'll be a three and out every play. So, uh, so that could get ugly. Um, you know, so yeah, you know, as long as those matchups work out for them the rest of the year, I, I think that um, he's at least worth looking at. Um, and here's his here's his next few games: Detroit, the Chargers, Cincinnati, the Jets, KC, Tennessee, Jacksonville, and then Chargers again. So Tennessee, maybe the Jacksonville one may be a little bit of a tough time, but mm-hmm. you know. But yeah. I think that by then the key is his health is his health and that foot getting better because right. obviously he's a speed demon, and if that foot's hurting him all the time, that could be troublesome. Agreed. So flipping uh, to the other side, we've got Mr. Mike Evans, who you mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, he's currently the sixth overall wide receiver, mm-hmm. but he's only 57% consistent. Now, you right. mentioned his two two 40-point games. <laughs> right. And that's it. That's exactly, it's pretty much that's exactly whole season. it right there. That's all he's got. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, he, you got to remember, he had a week where he had zero points. 0.0 and he's still sixth in overall points. If that doesn't tell you a boom and bust right there, I don't know what Boo. does. You know? <laughs> and then, you know, and then, you know, just a little bit farther down is Keenan Allen who's ninth in total points 
and is only 50% consistent. Yeah. It's the same thing. Boom or bust this year with those guys. Now, Evans has been that way in the past. Uh, in fact, until the last couple of years, he was hardly ever consistent. Um, he would he would always be top 15 in points and always be around 50 to 60 percent. Really, last year he started you know really becoming the last couple of years he really started becoming that 70 75 percent to make him worthy of being that wide receiver one that you know he's worth drafting. Um, but this year with Chris Godwin kind of taking over you know the one A or one B role um that's been troublesome because you know we've had this where evans has 40 points godwin you know doesn't get you know gets maybe 15 then godwin goes off for 40 and mike evans gets zero um so the back and forth has been very troubling um you know for owners of both evans and godwin but godwin's at least been keeping the consistency up there uh he's at 71 percent um you know so but when you really look at it, that's only one more clutch game than what Mike Evans has. So, you know, if, if he was five for seven, he'd be 71%. So it just shows you that both those guys kind of been that way. Godwin's third in total points. Evans is sixth in total points. And their average between the two of them is about 65%. So <laughs> it's it's been a hot mess for Tampa, but that's all they got. So. Yeah, I, I think if you're an owner of either one of them, you're not totally complaining. But uh, yeah, consistency right. wise, it is sort of a. Yeah, when I got that zero, I have like Evans one. Like I got that zero, and I was like, "What in the right. hell happened?" Yeah. I mean, not even yeah. a target. It was like, "Excuse me." Yeah. <laughs> well, at least like said, there's been so many, t- so many receivers like that this year. Um, you know, Stefan Diggs, uh, Marvin Jones, uh, Amari Cooper. Um, uh, who else? Uh, Hop- well, oh, yeah. Will Fuller was my personal favorite. Yeah, he was he one, one. He's game. one for eight for the year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, he had fifty-three points in one game. How many trade questions I got about Will Fuller after that week? And I was like, oh, no. no, 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 I, no, no. Do I not trade have for this guy. Any team, and I really wish I would have because I would have been selling him like hotcakes. Oh, man, yeah, one hundred percent consistency he that I would have said trade him. One hundred percent getting <laughs> off of my lineup as soon as that week happened. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, man. Well, let's let's finish this up here. So, my question for you on tight ends mm-hmm. is really—I mean, we we alluded to it earlier, right? It's a mess, total mess out there. I mean, Hooper's right. number one, Waller's like number three. I don't even know where Kelsey falls. He's up there, but. Like, yeah, he's second in total points. He's 100% consistent. Yeah. But he's the only guy right. who has so, been what you expected. Outside of Evan Ingram, maybe even Kittle. He's been a okay. Bit. Kittle's coming yeah. on. I mean, so I want to say, like, what's your what's your thought on tight end? Like, just not player-wise, but just kind of like overall feeling and, and thoughts about how we should be attacking tight ends in the future because of this. Well... I think a couple of things. One, I think next year, and I think going forward, you, you've you got to decide on, like, where you're going to go with tight ends. You can't, you, can't, you can't be wishy-washy when it comes to the tight end position because you either have to say, I want Kelsey and, and take him and, and adjust from there, or you have to say, I'm going, here's like I did with Cook and <laughs> Ingram and Howard is, is say, okay, here's this round five to seven guys that ha- have had consistency. And I'm going to, I'm going to go for this group because I don't want to go too high and I don't want to wait too late. Now, like I said, it, it worked, didn't work out all that great, but so next year now we'll be looking at a new group of players. You know, now if Dirk Cutter stays, we we expect Oxen Hooper to be consistent. Now, will people put him up with Travis Kelsey and go third or fourth round for Hooper? Probably not. So Hooper could be my Evan Ingram next year. Evan Ingram could probably still be in that fifth, sixth round range. Uh, maybe Darren Waller will be in that range. Hunter Henry will probably be in that range. What you're not going to see is probably Kittle or Ertz being up there because they're certainly not proving they they were worthy of that third round pick, uh, especially Ertz. 
Um, and I don't know if it's Ertz's problem or it's the Eagles' problem because Dallas Gardner <sighs> is right behind him is 57% consistent and is basically killing Zach Ertz's value. Yeah. Now, he did that a little bit last year, but not like this. I think it's a little uh, bit of both, it, man. I think his offense is just very, dying. Yeah, it was very <laughs> sporadic last year with with Goddard. And this year, I mean, he's the guy getting the touchdowns right. this year. And, and I have him yeah. in a dynasty league, and somebody was, like, trying to pry him away from me. I'm like, I can't right. give him up, A, because I'm an Eagles fan, B, because he's the one doing the damage right now. So right. right. I mean, so I, as I look at next year, I look at this top group of Kelsey, Hunter, Henry, Hooper, Waller, Ingram, Mark Andrews, and Kittle. I'll, I'll, I'll quietly say Ertz, but those guys will be the only guys I will draft next year unless something drastically changes for them, the OC, um, the, you know, quarterback, or, or something that could make a serious change. And the rest of these guys, I'm completely removing from my memory. <laughs> Because I don't see anybody else. The only other person that I would give some love to to be up, move up, would be if Greg Olson retires and Ian Thomas take, can be 100%. Oh, I don't know uh, if I can do that. At Carolina. I don't um, know if I can do that, man. Even when he's filled in, he's been pretty mediocre, I feel like. I don't know why. Yeah. Maybe Jonu Smith. He's He yeah, had a Jonu good game. Smith might be the Jonu, other one Jonu. I was looking at this group that – if you know um, Walker retires or moves on, yeah, and he becomes that's my a thought. Starter, but then it becomes okay. So who's going to be a quarterback next year? It's going to be Ryan Tannehill. They're going to draft somebody. So that's also kind of messy. So even that one, I'm kind of like, eh. you know, maybe OJ Howard will go to a team that will actually use him. That has some potential. But you know, overall, uh, you have to look at those top guys and go look. I got to take one of these players before the end of the sixth or seventh round so that I at least get one of them. Because if you don't, I think you're just in a world of mess because right now, like you said, there's only 10 uh, tight ends that are over, you know, 60% consistent. And one of them doesn't play anymore Disley for the rest of the year. Um, and who knows if he comes back and will be, still Russell Wilson's favorite target. They didn't use yeah. a tight end for years, and all of a sudden, Will Disley's a god. So, I mean, that's the kind of thing, you know, you have to find consistency in the system to get consistency out of the tight end is almost how it looks. Yeah, um, that's, not, that's, that's, a, that's a great way to look at it. I mean, it, and it's, you know, it's been... <sighs> It, it's been it's been rough. I mean, those who, you know, reach for tight ends are really feeling it this year. So, I don't know. It's It's a rough one. Yeah, it. Uh, you know, I even did a thing on like streaming tight ends and using the different home and aways for some of the guys. But the problem is, is that they haven't stayed healthy and the systems changed. So, you know, like I was, you know, I was really high on, you know, Jack Doyle and, and Ebron being part of that streaming process. Well, then Andrew Luck quits and Jacoby Brissett takes over. So that went to shit. And it's just, Jared Cook. I thought would be more valuable, you know, with Drew Brees and, and Teddy Bridgewater. And that didn't happen. And, you know, so like I said, but then every once in a while you'll see a big game from one of these guys, you know, maybe not big, but you always see them earn a clutch game or, you know, here or there. I mean, we, you know, Njoku's out. We don't know what he could have done. Um, so there's just a lot of question marks, but I think just like this year, I will be focused on a certain group of tight ends and that will be it. The rest of them will be backups at best or streaming options at best. And, you know, and, and it'll be interesting to see then where they go in drafts. Will all these tight ends move into the third, fourth, and fifth round because everybody's going to have the same attitude? It's possible, but I doubt it. Um, but I think it's just one of those where you just have to make that decision of this is the core of guys I want to get, and here's the round I'll get them in. And if, you know, and and – and see how it goes. I mean, let's be honest, even Kelsey being drafted in the second, third round wasn't worth it because he's second in total points. His consistency is perfect and it's that's that's great, but you'd be you'd be better off with Austin Hooper or Darren Waller at this point. Agreed, He's agreed. Would have got both of them in the ninth or tenth round. Now, are you gonna find an Austin Hooper or Darren Waller in the ninth round next year? Doubtful, but yeah, I guess you know. 
Yeah. I, yeah. Who knows? Who knows, man? We'll, you know. My my call on that would be Dawson Knox. Will be my maybe. Yeah, that's a, that's a solid Aaron one. Waller. So yeah, but yeah. all right. Well, enough about the tight end here. Um, I think we've gotten very good insight on that from 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 you here. But what's what's your big takeaway from the first half of the season as it relates to consistency? Again, just based on quarterback, receiver, running back at this point. <laughs> I think the biggest takeaway um, to me has been the boom bust at the, at the wide receiver position. I, I've, I haven't seen it be this bad for so many players. Um, like, you know, there's always one or two guys a year that you know it's going to happen to. Like Deshaun Jackson used to be one of those guys um, where, you know, you'd get 50% consistency and, you know, have top 20 points because he'd be you know have two touchdowns and 150 <laughs> yards one game and then go two games with three catches um but seeing it from so many of the stars the mike evans the stuff on digs the you know the guys i've talked about already uh, that's the thing that's really surprised me and really has been the biggest takeaway so what does that mean for the second half of the season um <laughs> it means be careful but but the problem is you can't bench those guys and that's what that's where it becomes a problem you know, um, and, and who knows, you know, who could be next. I mean, it could be somebody that started off hot, like a Michael Thomas, you know, what if, what if Drew Brees and, you know, Camara comes back and the running game gets clicked in again, maybe they don't throw to Thomas as much. He could Sounds drop off. I mean, we think so, so but, last year. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, which is exactly what happened last year. Um, you know, so, I wonder, I wonder if it would be, you know, the type of thing where I mean, I wonder if this boom bust is happening with the receivers because we're seeing teams, honestly, I, I feel like we're seeing teams rely on running backs more and even in the passing game, but just rely on running games. Like we're seeing these running backs really take a step forward overall. And I wonder if that's having, you know, that's, that's giving this boom bust and, uh, you know, another, another, angle of that could just be we're seeing teams just chuck it downfield more right well so that's it too. you're getting and these the big thing, all or nothing plays yeah well and i think the other thing you see in these games especially the boom games is that they don't throw it to anybody else like marvin jones had what three touchdowns or four touchdowns four <laughs> on my Kenny bench Galladay got what six points uh I mean, barely that to me is amazing <laughs> that it's terrible yeah, so, and, you know, the Stefan Diggs games, the Mike Evans games, the, you know, Chris Godwin games where Mike Evans gets zero, um, you know, those are the ones that, are, I, to me, it's surprising just that at some point somebody didn't go, I guess we should stop Mike Evans from catching touchdowns, you know, <laughs> yeah. or Marvin Jones from catching touchdowns. Um, I guess you could say, well, if we do that, then Kenny Galladay could get open, but hell, you haven't stopped Marvin Jones yet, so why not try? Um, right. You know, but I, that's just been a, a big surprise to me. Um, you know, there's there's no rhyme or reason. There's no way to say, well, you know, here's how you know that a guy's going to have a you know boomer bust game um, because if we could figure that out, we'd all be millionaires. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I think one one other angle, and it would take a lot of research and something I'll probably try to do in the off season is is look at like. When these bus games happen, like look to see which cornerback kind of lined up against them most often. You know that that, that information mm -hmm. is out there, and so I wonder if it's right. just a, a a matter of of the actual cornerback receiver matchup. Right. And I know you can get a lot of that kind of you know you can kind of predict right. that early on, mm -hmm. but it, it's you never know actually what these teams are going to do. You know, it's all prediction. Right. So. Well, I know that the Mike Evans zero was against Marshawn Lattimore with the Saints, and that's when there God you go off against the other one. Uh, yeah. And I know Marvin game. Jones went up, went up in the in the Minnesota game. He went up against their back, you know, their second, third corner, or whatever it is, because he, you know, and he went off to where Galladay was against Xavier Rhodes. So it was like, mm, okay, here you go, Marvin Jones. So like that kind of thing, I, I think has a, a lot to do with it too. So um, maybe we should pay a lot more attention to that as well. So th I think there's a lot to take away with this, you know. So. Right, right. You know, a lot yeah, more no, research I, needs yeah, to be, you know, be be taken into account. Right. I think on the other, if there's one other takeaway is that um, 
while there certainly are still stud running backs um, like Zeke, um, Dalvin Cook obviously proving that this year as well, um, I don't think – it worked out for well for you because when you went running back, running back, running back, you also got two good running backs at your RB2 and RB3 spots. Where in the past, a lot of people used to think, well, you got to get that RB1 and then you can wait – Mm-hmm. until much later and i don't think you can no you, you you've got to get so a lot of my teams um you know that i did uh, that i'm doing well in um is because i kind of got some of those running backs but i did get some of those good running backs in rounds four and five like chris carson yeah. um you know like aaron jones like um who else um uh, mark ingram mm-hmm. uh Austin, well, Eckler was a little bit further down. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Devontae Freeman, Tevin Coleman, Mark Ingram, Marlon Mack, um, you know, those kind of guys. Um, and I didn't take any chances on guys like David Montgomery and you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> Joe Mixon. And um, so, you know, when you look at the top running backs, you know, like even Fournette was a good value. You probably got him in the third round because a lot of people were down on him. Yep. So, you know, getting, you know, when you look at that top running back core, you see most of the players there are guys that you go, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Like, you don't see any big surprises above 70%. No, you, Singletary, you don't. Seven, Singletary is probably a surprise just because, but it's only four games. Right. Um, James White's certainly surprised, but he did it last. He did it last year for a while until Sony Michelle kind of came on. Um, but you know, everybody else, even Eckler, isn't a surprise because he was basically being Mar- Melvin Gordon. But when yeah. you look at the wide receiver core for the over seventy percent, there's names in there. You're like, huh? Yeah, DJ <laughs> Shark. So, Thank you. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, yeah. I think that. You know, uh, that to me is probably the big takeaway that as we head into next year, mm-hmm. um, you know, you've got to be careful with your draft. You want to get some good running backs, but you also want to get good value by also then getting good receivers that are proven consistent, stay consistent, um, and maybe be careful taking the Mike Evans and the Stefan Diggs and, you know, and focus on guys like Michael Thomas, Cooper Cup, you know, the guys that are proven consistency, Lockett. You know, all those guys were all high on my list in, in, in my book, you know, Julio Jones, mm-hmm. Hopkins, uh, Edelman. Um, you know, if you remember, Edelman, I think, was sixth overall in my rankings. Um, you know, and then you're going to get those surprises like DJ Shark and Cut, you know, Sutton and, um, and some of those guys. Um, yeah. but you know, the key is, is that if you took a chance and you went super high on T Y Hilton and Diggs and, uh, Mike Evans and Beckham and Landry and, and Keenan Allen, you know, some of those guys, you know, right now that's, they're hurting you. Now maybe you're surviving cause you got, you know, some good picks in the other ones, but so, you know, so it's, I'll, it's I'll tell you, I'll tell you most of my draft strategy this year was this, I went heavy running back early, heavy running back early, at least like three in the first four rounds. And then my receivers after that were, I kind of did go for the boom bust guys, knowing that I was banking on my running back being consistent, right, who had right, major yeah. upside. You know, they could go for 20, 25, 30 points any week. But if they their floors were at worst like 12, 15, 15 right. right? You know, that's right. their floor. So I was okay there, right? I was never going right. to get destroyed by them. My receivers are guys like Evans and Diggs and guys like that who are garbage one right. game, really awesome next game. I just hope they're not all garbage the same week. <laughs> right. That's what yeah. I banked on, and it is working right. out real well for me. So, good. you know, sometimes drafting these inconsistent guys can work. Um, you just have to hope they don't all go inconsistent right. on the same week. You know that right. that's that's the uh, that's the trouble. You, you brought up the, the, the best point, though, was to get a consistent core to build around. Yes. And, and you got the consistent core at running backs, probably got a 
good consistent quarterback. Yeah. Uh, maybe you got a good consistent tight end because you said you drafted Kelsey early. No, um, actually, so, I didn't. But I've I've oh, okay. I've got like Ingram in one place. I've okay, right, Ingram. I, okay. I'm, I'm I'm all over the place with tight end, but I did not get Kelsey right, anywhere. Right. Right, but you know that, and that's the one thing I always preach is you got to get that consistent core. Yeah, and, and that's that's a good point. Around that, and then you can take your chances like the Tyrell Williams and yep. the John Browns and the. the and I've got him. I got Brown in a couple of places. Bingo! Yeah, you you hit it right on the point there. So, I mean, last question we got for you here is you know, in the preseason show you brought up the prop bet tool. Um, mm-hmm. You said you were kind of like, and I, I I I'm in IT, so I want to say beta, right? It was kind of in your beta phase, right? How's yeah. it going? I want to ask you. Like, it's good. I yeah. Have you had a chance to look at it? I honestly have not. I'm not a big okay. gambler, so okay. I, I don't. I don't dabble in and it. And I'm not so. either. I just like the idea of the tool, and uh, you know, I've I've used it. Uh, uh, called Thrive Fantasy. So it's yep. yep. kind of yep. like a prop bet game. Um, so I've took. I started with a hundred dollars, and um, I was up as high as seven hundred and fifty bucks. Wow, uh, good work for down you, a little man. bit. I won. Oh, I won yeah. one big one for like five hundred. Um, and Holy so smokes. I've been up and down since then. Um, again, some you know now that the weather's coming into to play, sometimes um, I got to be careful with you know watching that uh, you know whether it's going to rain or wind and that kind of thing. Right. But uh, but you know I, I've done a little bit you know out on the uh, betting sites. Um, and, and I've usually at least, you know, I haven't lost any money, just been kind of breaking even Mm -hmm. making a little bit here, make a little bit there. Um, you know, but I'm not dropping a lot of coin either. I mean, you know, it's $10 a game, you know, $10 a bet, Sure. you know, maybe, maybe bet five or six of them and, you know, win 10 or 15 bucks overall. So, uh, but it's been kind of fun, you know, it's interesting to see, um, you know, it's a really cool tool, not only just for the prop bet stuff, but. It's got great data for looking at like the trends, you know, the consistency. I mean, again, you're looking at the consistency of the player. Uh, so, you know, if you want to look at consistency of total yards uh, they've done in those games, you know, you can use that for fantasy purposes just as well. Plus, it has the opponents, what they've done in, you know, that what that defense has done, you know, how many yards they've given up, you know, rushing yards, receiving yards, touchdowns. Uh, completions, attempts, you know, you can see all that kind of stuff there. So it, it's got a lot of great data in it. And, uh, you know, Matt Spencer did it for me, did a great job. And I definitely try it out, uh, you know, and if you go there and uh, use the uh, – go there and buy the uh, uh, subscription, uh, you save five bucks by using the, the word prop bet. So you get it for fourteen ninety nine, and you get all that, plus you get the clutch report, you know, consistency report and cool. how consistent the players are. So it's you get all those tools for basically the, the one price. So um, I decided to keep it all together and make it one big happy family I didn't instead of breaking it out. But it's been a lot of fun. It's been working out pretty well. So, you know, I think as more and more states get the uh, legalized betting sports books in their state, you know, I think – um, it'll be, you know, certainly become more popular because it'll be easier to use. So, uh, but yeah, so far so good. Really like it. Like I said, uh, some really interesting things you see there and you go, Hmm, kind of like you, when you look at these, you know, wow, the consistency, how's it that bad? You know, how could Aaron Rodgers not, you know, um, uh, you know, have like, uh, 258 yards passing and it'd be like, and it'll be like, he's only done that 25% of the time in this game scenario. And I'm like, well, I guess it makes sense. They're running the ball, you know, like at, like at home. This is the like the touchdown's killing him, dude. Defense, <laughs> and he didn't have to throw as much because they were running the ball. So, uh, right. You know, so those are the kind of things that kind of opens your eyes of like, oh, well, maybe I should look at my fantasy teams with my Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's been it's been good. So thanks for asking. No, okay, man. I, I do need to check it out. Um, we, we, you know, we actually do a weekly column on Thrive Fantasy. So, uh, Got to nice. got to get them to to look at that as well. So, all right, man, that's all we got uh, for for consistency talk. Why don't you remind everybody where they can find you on the internet uh, before we let yes. you go? You bet. Once again, guys, thanks again for having me. It's always a pleasure to come on and uh, chat with you guys. Always love the great questions and uh, banter back and forth. Uh, find me on Twitter at Bob underscore Lung, and of course, uh, the site is BigGuyFantasySports dot com. Uh, come there and check out all the great consistency tools we have there. And the uh, so, you know, if it's midseason. So if you want to make that playoff push, you want to see who some of these consistent players are. We talked about some buy lows and that. 
come subscribe to the site. We'll help you get to the playoffs, uh, help you with the, the Delvin Singletary, the James Whites, uh, and the Josh Allens. It might, uh, you might be able to trade for and, and help uh, get your team in, in the big playoff push. So, again, thanks, guys, for having me. All right, man. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on. Talk to you soon. You bet. Go see you, man. All right. Take care. Hi, man. Uh, so, yeah, that was uh, Bob Long again. Thanks for coming on. A great, great time as always, man. Um, so let's, let's get into our quick news and notes talk. Not not a lot to talk about here. This will go really quick. Um, so week nine buys, obviously the big talk. We got Atlanta, a lot of fantasy players there. Cincy, I mean, there's still a lot of starters on that team. You know, you got Boyd. People still starting mixing. <laughs> Uh, New Orleans, big time. Rams, big time. Like it's a lot of people out this week, so it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting, um, an interesting week for lineups. Um, trade deadline was kind of a letdown. I mean, there was a lot of rumors going around, but just nothing really happened. So, yeah, I mean, I think you agree with yeah, me. Nothing, nothing to talk about. Um, yeah, we we mentioned Andy Dalton getting benched. I want to ask you real quick, man. 30 seconds. What does this mean for Boyd, Mixon, and Green, dude, when Green comes back? Uh, hold on. Let me crack a beer first. <laughs> um, it's getting ugly. <laughs> say 30 seconds or 30 minutes? 30 uh, <laughs> seconds, jerk. I mean, I think it, it, it hurts everybody to start, but we don't know what we're getting with Ryan Finley, and that that's – just the nature of it. The guy's a rookie. I mean, he's been uh, uh, assumedly learning throughout these first uh, eight games here. He's got the bye week to really step up and, and try to fit into this system. Um, if anything, I would hope that Cincinnati is smart enough to tailor their playbook for week 10 to his strengths and, and kind of not dumb it down, but really pick plays that, you know, work well for him. Um, but, but, I mean, we talked about it earlier. Dalton's really, he's been a good point producer from a fantasy standpoint. Obviously, the team's not winning. Um, so that's kind of irrelevant. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it, it knocks them down at, at least a, a peg or two. I mean, Mixon's already kind of been garbage this year as it is anyways, so he might kind of stay where it is, or maybe he'll get some more checkdowns. So maybe he'll gain some value in PPR. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it'll be rough, dude. Uh, like I said, four bye week teams, and then there's a lot of injuries, which we're about to get to. I'll let you rip through them. So, yeah, yeah. making lineups this week has been tough. I've had to make a lot of waiver wire moves that I otherwise would not have made. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the the biggest pain in the ass injuries that we have here are David Johnson and now Chase Edmonds. Chase Edmonds um, is out, by the Ch- way. Yep, Edmonds has been ruled out. I saw that earlier as well. Johnson is still, uh, it sounds like a game time decision, mm-hmm. um, but possibly unlikely to play. They went out and traded. This This was like the lone trade deadline right. news. Kenyon Drake went from, from the bad to the too bad. bad I finished bad. this beer that deserves a drink. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, um, I mean, uh, what what are we making of this? Uh, nothing. Are we? I I want nothing to do with his backfield. Um, so two things, right? They're not giving Kenyon Drake all the touches. They've already said he's going to get some work. Whatever the hell that means. They signed Alfred Morris. They signed Zach Zenner. And on top of that, tomorrow night, Thursday night, they're playing San Francisco. Run, run as fast as you can away from this game. No way. I'm not touching the Cardinals tomorrow night if I can help it. Or do we go the opposite way and say, well, it's Halloween no crazy things happen on go Halloween. go away from me. Kenyon Drake runs for 212 yards and three touchdowns. Does his best 
Halloween costume of Zeke Elliott, or well, I guess technically it would be Fournette because he ran for over 200 yards earlier this year. But no. I don't think he had three touchdowns. No, nope. um, go away from me. You want to make that bet? I'll make that bet. <laughs> mm. Yeah, keep moving. All right. Do we still have Bob on the line about the prop? <laughs> 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 just uh, all right um, yeah all right so ravens uh marquise brown is expected to play uh, i believe some they had some other uh defensive players that were injured that looks like they're potentially coming back as well i know jimmy smith was one of them i can't the other one's not coming to me right now but we don't have it written down because we don't typically care about defense uh can do it to jj watt i'll give i'll give a shout out to jj watt He's hurt. Done for the uh, year. Sorry, yes. bro. Yes, Tears. We can, we can definitely do that. It's pretty typical <laughs> for him. It's a it's a huge blow. I mean, you know, every year when he gets injured, um, I, the dude, I like, I just feel for this guy. All he wants to do is go out, help this team win. You know, if he was an offensive lineman, then maybe Watson wouldn't get sacked anywhere near as much as he does. Uh, but. Yeah, so that's a that's a big blow to Houston's D for sure. Uh, Cam Newton still not ready to return. I don't know if he will return. You know, once he is ready, because Allen has done well. Uh, AJ Green targeting week eleven to get back, so he'll have you know the bye week this week to still work through what he can, and then next week as well would still be out. Joe Flacco is injured. He is probably done for the season. Brandon Allen is now the quarterback until they can figure out if Drew Locke is ready. I mean, what's what's the impact in Denver here? I mean, clearly you're not picking up the quarterbacks, but you know, you you've, for those that were you know looking at Cortland Sutton, uh, I, I I think. It's tough, man. Like I still like him as a player. I'm just I honestly don't know really anything about Brandon Allen. <laughs> I know he was drafted by yeah. the Jags, didn't make it there, got picked up by like I mean, you don't make it as the Jags backup quarterback when they had Blake Bortles last year. That's not a good sign. Um so yeah, but they got Uncle Rico this year, so there's no right. there was no place for him. Right. In, so in the locker room it, with, with Minshew and that mustache. So <laughs> let's be real here. Yeah, it it's it's a tough one, man. Like, you know, you've got to knock these guys down a peg. The offense is gonna struggle. Um, I, I think even more so than it already is. So that's that's a tough one. Uh yeah, I I did just see uh, I was making a couple of waiver moves while we were talking earlier. And I saw somebody had dropped Cortland Sutton in one of my leagues. Oh, I don't know if I go that far. I I think that's that's a bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see if that pays off. You're right. Uh, I might I might have to put in a claim on him. Um, I got to look and see which which one of my Yahoo leagues it was if I have room for him. But speaking of receivers and uh, and Minshew's mustache, D.D. Westbrook. Um, shoulder injury knocked him out of week eight. Uh, he was already questionable before the game and, you know, that's already not a good sign. So, uh, he did absolutely nothing, uh, last week. Uh, his teammate DJ Chark popped up on the injury report this week with a quad injury. Um, my guess is he'll play and, you know, keep an eye on DD as well. Uh, the big the big pickup there is Chris Conley. He's been stellar the past two weeks, um, filling in. Uh, so keep an eye on him. Uh, we got Patty Mahomes is still practicing, but likely targeting Week Ten. Brandon Cooks dealing with a concussion again. Uh, they're doing quote unquote what is best for him as a person, which sounds like he won't be back for a while. Um, you can take that quote for what it means and what you feel like is best for right. him as a person. <laughs> um, Sterling Shepard did get in contact practice, so he's moving in the right direction. Uh, they don't play till Monday as well this week, and um, we'll go with with that. Um, 
but keep an eye on him. It could be could be a tough risk, you know, to try to start him since he does play Monday. Um, Thielen missed week eight with a hamstring, should be back for week nine. I mean, what's his impact on Diggs? He's been balling out lately. So yeah, he has. I mean, this obviously knocks Diggs down a, a peg. Like he's not going to go off for. You know, seven, eight, nine catches for 150 yards and a touch, but uh, not you know, at least not every week. Um, but I, I think the, I think the relationship between all these receivers and cousins is is a little on the mend at this point. So it's um, you know, it it'll, I think it'll still be okay, but you can't expect the the crazy numbers he had before because some of that's going to go to Thielen. Yeah. Yep. And next we got Mister. Uh, hold on, let me stretch here. Uh, T-Jax. Eagles. Possibly coming back. It's about goddamn time. Of course, I dropped him in one of my leagues because I needed room and I got tired of waiting, so it makes sense that he'd be healthy enough to return. So it's all your fault. Added. That's cool. Glad you know. I don't know if he got added, though. So I need <laughs> to, uh, And it was a mad dash. I had, I had two DJs on my team. Deshaun and David Johnson, and I dropped David Johnson by accident in this mad flurry of ad drops, realized it, and was like, oh, shit, oh, shit, hold on. <laughs> Immediately sent, like, a group text out in the Yahoo chat and was like, nobody at him. I didn't mean to do that. It was the wrong DJ. Commish, jump in. Yeah. So... Although, hey, this is just good news for, for Wentz. I mean, th- th- this offense yeah. has been struggling since he went out. Hopefully this opens it back up because as a Wentz owner in multiple leagues, I am dying with him as my quarterback. It's just like, oh. luckily the rest of my team is pretty good, but it's been a struggle with him, and I actually streamed Ryan Tannehill over Wentz last week, and it actually worked. So, okay. Don't feel I good played, about it. Uh, I had Jackson on by i benched wentz in favor of his opponent mr uh, josh allen and yeah. i also did better with that <sighs> yeah i mean i was staying away from my game because like of the weather but better but yeah i'll stay away from my game also because of the weather but still it was just like i'm in a, i'm i'm yeah. done with wentz for the time being i didn't drop him but hey move it on exactly I, so James Conner had a pretty good game Monday night, but he hurt his shoulder late in the game. He's currently questionable for week nine. I believe it was like an AC joint or Mm -hmm. something they were calling it. He says Uh, he's ready to go, but we'll see. That seems like a weird one. He sounds like it's not serious, but players always say that and doctors always say different. Uh, Matt Breda also injured in week eight with an ankle issue. He is very questionable for this week, so you know, fire up your Raheem uh, most mosterts. Oh wait, never mind. He's uncertain as well with quad injury. Um, so Jeff Wilson Jr. and Tevin Coleman, what's going on? Big game tomorrow against the Arizona Stupid Birds. Um, Holy smoke! Sorry, I gotta cut you off, dude. Howie Kendrick just hit a two-run bomb. Bot top seven to put the Nats up three to two. Howie Kendrick, wow. winner of the NLCS MVP, MVP by the way. It and just flipped over. I literally have the box score on another tab, and I went back to look at it. It was one to two, and it just went bink, three to two. Wow. Oh, that's fantastic. Incredible. And it was off of... That was not off of Granky. It was off no. of Will Harris. Yeah, Will Harris in the he game, blowing it. The first run. All so right. Grinke yeah, gives moving up on a here. Homer to Rendon, and he gets charged with the Soto run as well from Kendrick's home run. Oof. Dude, ah, this is this is tight, man. It's it's, gonna a, it's gonna be a battle of bullpens, and ah, frankly, I think. Houston has the better bullpen, but I think so. But dude, their bullpen got lit up last night, dude. Looking at the box score, you got Granky six in the third, and now Will Harris nothing yet, and a homer on one hit. Ouch! Pitchers for for Nats, you've got Scherzer five strong, two earned, and then Patrick Corbin <laughs> a starter. So I mean, oh, they'll pull, yeah, they'll pull, they'll pull in their starters. Their starters. 
Of course Are they will. Are we going to see Garrett Cole in this game? Yes or no? At this I point, I don't think you can, dude. The dude pitched like seven innings. Or no, did he? How many innings? Did he? he pitched a lot yesterday. But anyway, all right. Let, let's finish this up. Uh, Delaney Walker is the last one here, right? Uh, question yeah, with an ankle injury. So. All right, let, let's rip through our picks. We're running a little long tonight, so let's just get to this uh, highest, lowest scoring game. Mine's Bucks Seahawks. I mean, the defenses aren't great here. Seahawks, you know, has the the reputation of a good defense, but they're just they're they're mediocre. The Bucks obviously are terrible, so I think this could be a pretty high scoring game. What do you got? I got Pat's Ravens. Yep. Uh, this is always a really strong rivalry, almost up there with. Uh, Ravens Steelers not quite but it's become a really good rivalry I I think that this is you know the Ravens coming off a bye week Patriots are still undefeated it's in Baltimore Sunday night this this crowd base is going to be rowdy and ready so I think that's going to be a big game fair enough fair enough Uh, mine my lowest scoring game is skins and buffalo i think it's pretty easy to skip pick the skins on most weeks <laughs> uh, especially now that they got Dwayne haskins starting yay the one injury i did not put on there was case keenum because nobody really cares but um yeah this is gonna be yeah. bad this is gonna be a bad game yes yes it will be um <laughs> i also sticking with Buffalo's AFC East. We we now will have all AFC East teams covered here with Jets at Dolphins. Um, I literally read on. I know we're running long, so I'll keep this short ish. The sleeper information for Ryan Fitzpatrick said Fitzpatrick did whatever in the first half and finally righted the ship. And threw two interceptions and fumbled or whatever, and it's like, wait, what? What? How do you right the ship by turning the ball over? Like, I I don't know if they were poking fun at at the beard or what it was, but it was very weird or and, and poorly written. Uh, very very different from the articles on fantasy6pack.net. Um, go check them out. Shameless plug. Our writing is phenomenal. Our writers are phenomenal. Go check out their content. All right. Sleepers bust. Who you got? All right, man. So my quarterback sleeper is going to be Mr. Carson Wentz. And it's only if DJX plays. I mean, look, I get it. Chicago's a tough matchup. They have been they have been letting up a little bit more here and there. Um, but I like Wentz to, you know, kind of change the narrative on the season, man. Especially with if Djax comes back and, and can can stretch this field a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I like it as well. Um, I hope that that Chicago gets theirs just like they did in the playoffs last year. Um, typically, we don't pick from the Thursday games because we are airing or recording on Thursdays, but I'm going Jimmy G. Arizona's just not very good. Um, Jimmy G's been consistent this year, not blowing you out of the water with points because their run game has been so good. But with their, you know, two of their three headed monster, you know, banged up uh, and a short week, I think maybe this could be the week that he really steps up and, and gets the passing game going. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's a great matchup, really great matchup. Um, my running back here is gonna be Jalen Samuels. I think people are kind of sleeping on him this week. Uh, I mean, he's even if James Conner plays, I mean Samuels was getting a lot of work, you know, before he got hurt. So I think Samuels can at least be like a flex play, especially with all the other injuries and bye weeks that are going on. Samuels is the guy I think you can 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 rely on. Yeah, I like that pick a lot. Now that he's healthy and with Connor potentially banged up, he could step up big. Uh, speaking of stepping up big, I'm going with Duke Johnson Jr. Guy has been invisible, almost Deion Lewis-esque, but <laughs> not that bad. Um, 
I feel like a contact lens has better vision on the field than Deion Lewis these days. But Duke Johnson finally had himself a pretty nice little game last week. Um, this this game, this Jacksonville-Houston game, will be in London, so we know what Jacksonville does when they go to London. They usually win 47-3. to um, I, But Duke Johnson's going to be involved, I think, in this game, and 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 I think it's it's almost looking like more of the even split with him and Hyde that we kind of thought was going to happen. It just mm-hmm. never really did. Yeah, uh, I, that's a risky one to me, but I, I can get on board with that. Amendola is didn't my really res- like a lot of the yeah players, it, it so was tough. That's, um, that's why I, I, like, eh, I, I, I feel right. you. I feel you there. This week was tough, man. Um, that's why I picked Wentz as my quarterback. <laughs> um, Demi Amendola is my receiver. Dude, this guy's been a PPR monster. I mean, I can't believe I actually picked up Amendola in a league or two this this week. Like PPR leagues, I'm all in. It's over. Like. <laughs> yeah. I'll use him as a flex play, bye week fill ins. Why not, dude? Yeah. He's like an extension of their running game at this point because they don't have one. He's got 19 targets over the last two weeks. Yeah. I mean, they don't have, exactly. They do not have a running game. They're just using Damian Amendola. They're just going, here, go. The week before that. And he's got 200 total yards, eight receptions each week, 105 and 95. He needs to find the end zone, but. I mean, he'll be I healthy mean, for two still, more weeks, so it's fine. Positive but, point production, you know, especially in full PPR. Yeah, I mean that's that's huge numbers. Yeah, All right, who's so, your receiver? I, I definitely like Amendola, but I already mentioned my guy earlier, Chris Conley. Mm-hmm. Again, sticking with that London game, sticking with Westbrook being banged up, um, and you know, Chark potentially banged up. I think of the two. Shark has a better, uh, you know, better perspective prospectus for playing. So yeah, I, I like I agree. Conley though. Just like Amendola, he's been a PPR monster the past couple mm-hmm. weeks. So pick him up if he's not already picked up in your leagues. All right. So who you got for busts? All right, man. My bust here is Aaron Rodgers. I know this dude's been on fire the last couple of weeks, but uh, and I picked him last week. But I'm going back to the well. Uh, didn't work for me last well. week, obviously. Uh, Chargers yeah. allow the seventh least points to quarterbacks. And maybe this is just because teams get up big on them and they run the ball. But what do we just say is why Rodgers wasn't consistent? Is because they got up big and they started running the ball. So that's kind of what I think is going to happen this week. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going with Tom Brady. I know I said this was my highest scoring game. I was just going to say, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but this could be the James White game that we've all been looking for, like I alluded to earlier. Baltimore gives up the 10th fewest fantasy points to the quarterback position, at least according to the league I'm looking in on Yahoo. Um, I don't know if that's rated by points in that specific league or if it's just overall in general. I mean, Patty Mahomes is really the only quarterback that had a huge game against Baltimore. Mayfield had a good game, just over 20 points, but that's it. Everyone else mm-hmm. has been under under 20, again, based on this one league that I'm in that I'm looking at. I think it's fairly standard scoring for quarterbacks. So. Um, again, I, I just think this could be, this could be a run-heavy game for, uh, for New England. Yeah, fair mean, enough. Yeah, Sony, Sony Michelle know. and James White. Yeah, mixed yeah. match. Maybe they'll add in some Brandon Bolden. <laughs> uh, so my running back here. I, it's funny. You got the Pats and Ravens as the, the highest scoring game, but we're both picking two guys as boss, and I'm picking yeah. Mark Ingram. And dude, this is that New England defense. I mean, you you said it last yeah. week with Chubb, and Chubb had a good game minus the two fumbles. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I just this New England defense is. Scary good. It's it's crazy. You know they're going to be tested here the next few weeks, but I, you know, I'm still worried about Mark Ingram. I think the, I think the Ravens are going to have to pass a lot to keep up with with the New England Patriots. So that's why I'm down on Mark Ingram this week. 
Yeah, I, I was borderline gonna pick Lamar, but I was like, uh, I can't, I can't. I gotta. I think Brady's gonna have a worse game than him. So yep. he's just too dynamic on the ground to, you know, Brady doesn't have that ability to just get out in open space and run for 20 yard gain at a time. I mean, the guy can't even run a freaking route and catch a ball in the Super Bowl, so (laughs) can't expect much out of a 48-year-old virgin. Um, Anyway, uh, (laughs) we know he's not a virgin. I was going to say, like, (laughs) (laughs) or he's got a supermodel wife that he has kids with. So yeah, sure. that he makes out with as well. So whatever. All right, running back. I'm going Marlon Mack. Um, <laughs> Jesus, I this mean, has gone on too long. Finish this. <laughs> I'm done. All I'm gonna say Marlon Mack. I don't All know, right, Pittsburgh's D, Pittsburgh's D has been pretty. pretty yeah, they've been pretty decent. Uh, my receiver is uh, Terry McLaurin. Buffalo defense not good matchup. Haskins as his quarterback even worse. Pass. Yeah. I, I was literally going to select the same name. I was looking at the list there. I was, like, I was oh, shocked I when like he was like twenty fifth. Like, when he was like twenty fifth ranked, I was like, No, no. <laughs> like what's happening here? <laughs> no way. So I'm uh, I'm sticking with the division here, going golden tate. You know, Giants Giants Dallas Monday night game. It's a tough call. Tate's been pretty good. Um with the different injuries and, and players being down, we don't know what's going on with Shepard. So it's just a tough call to make. I, I think if you have better options, I would use them. Yep. So defense is the stream. Lower yeah, ship. not a lot out there. I mean, I, I guess you got to pick on the Jets, you know, or pick on the Dolphins again, right? And I'm going with the Jets. That's my only logic there. They're not a good defense either, but... The defensive we got we gotta almost up this percentage number because it's bad to pick a streaming team. We gotta go with like fifty five. I know, man. It just, it's just it's the only way. It's pretty brutal. We might have to increase this, but even then, man, like we're only looking at like two more teams. Um, yeah, it's not much. So yeah. I went with the Cleveland uh, Browns because Denver and because Solid pick, man. I got them in a couple leagues. I like and it because Denver. Um and uh and rookie quarterback. That that's my reasons. Yeah, no. Solid. And I'm actually mad at myself for not finding them on the list. So They're um, literally like right under the chats by like two percent, I think. It was it was very close. So they were, they, they oh actually for some reason they're forty two percent owned. But that's all right. I'll I'll give you that oh, one. That's were more than, than that. They are now. They're forty four. I just opened it. They're forty four percent now. But when I picked earlier today, they were at forty percent. So I did it. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, well, that's uh, why when I looked at it, you know, as we were going through the show, I was like, "Oh, son of a bitch, already up this thing." All right, fine. Well, I can play that game too. <laughs> so whatever. Enough. It's good enough. Fair enough. Picks fair below. enough. The picks below. All right, fine. I could say Denver's defense. Who cares? Anymore. I'm not. I'm not Whoa. dwelling on it, dude. All right, man. I think that's it for the show. Um, got an inning and a half or two, two and a half innings left of this game. So we'll see what happens. It's an exciting World Series. That's all I know. So yeah. good night, everyone, and good luck in week nine. Peace.